and down here the, in the east, it will be very sunny. Claire Taylor, a Year 4 teacher at Frampton Cottrell Primary School in South Gloucestershire, has been working with her class on an integrated topic about weather. The class has spent eight weeks on the unit, using ideas and information about weather to framework on literacy, dance, maths and ICT. This integrated approach is being watched by advanced skills teacher Angela Craig and Alison Bailey, a geography specialist in the Faculty of Education at the University of the West of England. The experts begin their analysis with a literacy lesson. The children are using the language of different types of weather as a stimulus for writing poetry. Now today, we're going to be writing some weather poems thinking about all the information we know about weather, all the different types of weather, how this weather makes us feel. Now, on the board, I was thinking, I was having a little play and decided to write my own little stanza about weather using the word beautiful. And I thought, what I'd like you to do is, in pairs, looking at the words which are underlined in red, to think of different words, better words we could use. I think this is really inspirational, this lesson. And they know, although it's literacy hour, they're actually going to be drawing on their experience of the weather topic they've been looking at in geography and that they're going to be developing in all their lessons. It's important that the children do feel secure in, in what they're going to be learning to actually enhance and, and, and get the best learning from them. The pupils work with learning partners to come up with words to replace the ones in the poem on the whiteboard. And it's such a good skill to be using learning partners and whiteboards and it's so encouraging the children in their learning and, and helping them make that progress. And by having children working together and with a model to work on, you know, none, none of them are frightened of having a go, are they? They're all, they can all get started. It's so. a really good example of good practice where the children can all achieve in this lesson. Shall we put gliding? Shall we write Holly's word in? Yeah. Much better than my up. They are really well behaved kids in there and you know there are other ways you might do this as well to make sure they're all engaged like they could all have their own copy of that poem and they could all and in pairs together they actually could edit the one in front of them so they've actually all physically done that because these children are sitting very nicely. But if you had a, a, a more difficult class you might need to have the children engaged. Yeah. Absolutely and engaged and, and, and being able to do that. Right, now what we're going to do is we're going to start to make our very own weather poems. Before the children get down to writing their own poems, the teacher uses pictures to encourage her class to think about different sorts of weather. They don't just have to think about what the weather might be like out of their head. They can really see things and then get the words that they want to describe it. And it might be really good at this stage where the children could actually have the pictures in amongst them rather than in the distance on the board, actually have them using them. So they can handle them and share them around. Mr Howells, would you like to? I thought you worked really sensibly this morning. Come and find your spot here. OK, big voice. Beautiful hot sun shines in my eye. Beautiful cold snow falls from the sky. Beautiful thick fog covers the street. Beautiful shimmering lightning always strikes my feet. William, I noticed on the last line, you didn't just pick one word from our list, you had beautiful and shimmering. The next step then would be, perhaps in, a, in a, the next lesson, they could work with a learning partner and actually really look, does the word that they've used at the beginning, for instance, beautiful here, does that really describe the fog? Does that really describe what the lightning would be like and that could be taking their literacy and geography that next step further on in what they're, they're learning because they could develop and use the right adjectives to describe that. An afternoon dance class is the next lesson up for examination. Children are working in groups to choreograph their own dances, all inspired from ideas about weather conditions. They begin by discussing what they've done so far. And we need to be discussing our moves. Does this work? Does that work? Does this move link on to the next move nicely? Can we put a move in the middle to link the two moves? OK, and you do that through discussing and practising and trying out different moves. Yeah. We can try and improve the Mexican way. And yeah, because we just do that. Yeah, we just, we just do it like that. Yeah. 
It's really impressive the way the children are talking in groups very confidently and they've obviously done some dance work before on the weather and, and now it's it's where they're actually practicing it, evaluating it and refining it and they're working incredibly well there in a group. <laughs> It's an obvious thing that they're exploring here and it's not about being right or wrong. It's about learning and they're learning through this movement and dance and the conversations that they're having. What you need to be thinking about is, gosh, I like that move, that worked really well. You need to be thinking to yourself, what kind of weather are this group acting out? So after the performance is finished, we can provide positive feedback to our groups. Obviously this is not just a geography lesson, it's a dance lesson. So in dance you want to be performing, you want to be evaluating, you want to be doing it again and making it better. So as well as the geography side of things, they need to be looking at how could they actually improve this as a, as a dance, as a piece of music. of weather was this group trying to show? Was it a kind of windy day? Was it a kind of windy day, girls? Yeah. yeah. Elizabeth? Because when they kept on doing that, it looked like it was blowing. It was blowing again, they were bustling around. <laughs> Ellie? I thought it was tropics. Tropical? Yeah. Why did you think it was tropical? Uh, because they were doing all sorts of things, not just wind and like just different stuff that maybe it may be sunny and windy. So you thought the moves kind of showed different types yeah. of weather? Okay. Not many and teachers with year three and four children would have the confidence to let the children, you know, have that kind of feedback to, the, to other groups, would they? Yeah, there are two strands of questions here. It could be actually about performance and the quality of movement and also the geography side. Does it actually represent the type of weather you are trying to show? Angela and Alison go on to look at clips of one of Claire's numeracy lessons. The children are going to work on data about weather conditions they've collected over the previous eight weeks. We will be looking at temperature, OK? The data about rainfall, wind speed and temperature has been put into a table by the teacher. One of the things that they could do here before they start drawing the graph is to actually question the data, to look and say, can you see, for example, if we look under the, the wind column, the wind speed column, on which date is the, is the highest number? What was the windiest day? Or what is the difference between the highest temperature and the lowest temperatures? They're actually using their numbers, their subtraction in context. Hands up, what could we make the title of our graph? Who, could be, who can think of a title? We're looking at temperature. Can you come up with any ideas? Temperature of each day. Temperature of each day, fine. So, Kim, what do you think? What will our labels be? Would you put days at the bottom? The days along the bottom, good. OK, so we've got the days. So we start with um, Monday the 17th. I'll do it in math form. We might want to do it like this, the 1st of the 5th, 18th. What I would have liked to see, first of all, is them actually looking at a line graph for some of the data so that they're actually interpreting the information, first of all, when it's been presented. You're and they can graph. actually see what a line graph looks like. Go up to eight, OK. Monday, what have we got for Monday, the 17th of January? What's the temperature? Chloe? 10. 10, 10 what? Degrees Celsius. That's 10. Next, Oscar? I almost think she could have made it easier for herself, Next possibly month? by using either right, so right a overhead projector with graph paper on, or some people would be lucky enough to Next have day, data projectors and interactive whiteboards in their classroom so actually it would make it a whole lot easier for the teacher herself and the children to understand. Well and then when the children come to draw it if they're using graph paper it wouldn't be so difficult for them would it? It's, it's an excellent way of modelling it.
red and yellow table, I would like you to do a line graph of um, wind strength. Orange and blue table, I would like you to do a bar graph of rainfall. The experts watch the as the children are divided into ability groups and given and different green, data handling projects to complete. I think it's really important she modelled it first of all, but they could have also have them on their tables when they go back to their tables to start oh, drawing yes. their own graphs because then it becomes difficult turning and looking at the board. And actually, it's just a little thing, but it does make the children focus a lot more. So we've got days along the bottom, rainfall up the side. If we make each bar each day kind of five spaces, yeah? So that will be one day, that will be another, that will be another. So geography is a wonderful way of getting maths across to the children because here they've collected their data, they've got ownership of it. They're interested in seeing what results they've found for their school. So it's a natural way into, into learning how to draw graphs. I think they've got a real opportunity for developing that further and really looking at the math side of things now and she's used geography as a way into that. The fourth lesson analysed by the experts is an ICT activity that brings together all the ideas the class has been working on. The children are going to write and present their very own weather forecasts and they're going to do it to camera. Smile, a nice warm smile. Hello, welcome to the six o'clock news. And this is a great way of bringing all their learning together that they've developed during this topic on, on weather to actually put it into a meaningful context. Now, when we are using our camcorder, our ICT equipment, to film our weather forecasts, it is essential, absolutely essential, that those children that are working on their games are absolutely quiet so the microphone doesn't pick up anyone else talking apart from our weather forecaster. In the north of Scotland you can see very terrible hurricanes reaching wind speeds of up to 100 miles an hour. He's understanding quite a complex concept there, isn't he? About the strength of the winds. He links it to the Beaufort scale by showing his picture he's drawn to show the devastation caused by, by storm force winds. And it's great the way they're working together in the group and actually stopping and starting and wanting to start again and asking for support from one another. It's really good to see that they've obviously spent time. Spells with temperatures reaching to nine degrees Celsius with a slight breeze heading from the west. I'm sure at the beginning that they knew that they were going to work towards some kind of final presentation with an audience. And so everything that they've done so far, it's made it even more meaningful. And down here the, in the east, it will be very... Sunny. I'm really excited to see here geography being used as part of an integrated curriculum. I think the teacher inspires the children magnificently. It's important to make space for subjects like geography, and here we can see that you don't need to make space for it. It naturally leads to work in maths. It naturally leads to developing children's literacy skills, and it really does enrich the curriculum. It's inspiring for me to see such an enthusiastic teacher in her classroom. She's happy, she's confident, the children have an excellent relationship with her and one another, and they're enthusiastic learners who are obviously successful in what they're doing and it makes such a difference to children's learning.